Ladies and gentlemen, Investor Talk is back with an update with Jorge Canosa there in France. You have been waiting for a long time. Great to see you again. No, a pleasure to join you and your audience, uh, Jan. We talk about the production, the financial numbers, Seguela, of course, exploration results and the Chesa acquisition. Let's begin with the oldest news release, the production, and let's have a look at your press release. For the second quarter, Jorge Fortuna produced 93,455 ounces of gold equivalent. That was slightly less than the prior quarter, and it was affected by a reduction in the silver production at San Jose. We come to this later. But on the other hand, the gold production rose and the base metals also. Would you give a general comment on those production numbers of the second quarter, please? Yes. You know, the, the, for every practical purpose in terms of production, the second quarter uh, was pretty much in line with the, 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 the previous quarter, right? Marginally less, less ounces produced. But here is the important takeaway, uh, Jean, is that in the first half of the year, no, in the first, let's call it H1, we produced about 124,000 ounces of gold and about 3 million ounces of silver. That's what we, we produce at the current run rate in six months, the first half of the year. Now that we are entering into the second half of the year, H2, uh, our results are weighted towards the second half because our new flagship asset, Seguela, which I'm sure we're going to be talking about soon, uh, starts producing in the third quarter. The third quarter, this one that we are completing uh, in a couple of days, is the first quarter when we report financial results and full quarter or the first full producing quarter for the new flagship asset. So compared to the first half of the year, in the second half, we are in a position to boost gold production by you know, 40, 45%. So on top of the 124,000 ounces of gold we produce in the first half of the year, if we use that as a base, in the second half, we're going to add 60 to 75,000 ounces of, of gold, right? So that is uh, significant. And um, that is the main takeaway, no? For us, the second half of the year, 2023, is a turning point uh, because of the high margin ounces that we are bringing to our production. Uh, the first half of the year, has been basically aligned with guidance and expectations, a bit less silver uh, coming out uh, because of the uh, stoppage and blockade that we had in Mexico in the second quarter. But all of that is resolved. And, uh, you know, all mines are performing well and generally within guidance and expectations. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's have a closer look at Seguela numbers, not only the production, you encountered also higher grades than you first expected. Let's have a look at a table from your press release. Your grade control works found out that the grade is higher than anticipated. I call that a nice surprise. And then, as you said already in the other press release, I read that in August you produced at Seguela 11,685 ounces of gold. So it is gaining pace. And if we annualize that, we have an annualized rate of 140,000 ounces already. How does it look like right now? And I think the game changer is gaining pace. Yes, yes. And and, and that's a central point of, of uh, uh, with respect to catalysts for value, right? If you look at the performance of the mine over the last past month, in June, we produced about 4,000 ounces of gold. In July, we grew production by 50%. We, we delivered around 6,000 ounces of gold. 
And in August, we expanded production by almost 100%. No, we took it to the 11,600. I can tell you, I can advance to you that September should, it, it's, you know, even better. This has been a relatively smooth uh, ramp up for the mine. So as you see, in three months, we've been able to expand month after month production between 50 and 100%. Yes, we are running the mine at a very healthy annualized, an annualized rate. So, you know, just doing simple math, we can derive those 140, 150,000 ounces that you, that you just mentioned. For the year, though, for 2023, for this second half of the year, we have guided 60 to 75,000 ounces of gold. And we are uh, guiding the market that we are tracking well to meet our guidance. Right, you know the mine is performing well. We see costs well and under control in these early months. We guided costs between eight hundred and eighty and eleven hundred dollars per ounce, and I can advance to you that we're seeing our costs tracking along with our expectations, along with our guidance. So it's not only the production, but also the costs that are coming uh, with uh, in line. This mine. Not, that's not only boost our production by 40, 50 percent in the second half of the year, but it also boosts our cash margins, Jan, uh, because it produces meaningful amount of ounces at a very low cost. So uh, it's a, a meaningful contribution to the bottom line. This mine alone will supply roughly 40% of our free cash flow on a consolidated basis. So it's a flagship asset, one we're very excited about, and in particular, very excited about the third quarter because it's the first time we'll have an opportunity to share with the market through our financial results, the strength of the business with this new asset in the portfolio. Yes, I'm looking forward to those new numbers Jorge, with respect to the production, we also have to talk qu quickly about the other mines, Yaramoko, San Jose. Uh, Yaramoko, there you also encountered higher grades than before, also a good surprise. Lindero had a fair quarter, slightly falling grades. San Jose had challenges through those blockages that they have solved. But on the other hand, very good drill results. We come to that in a moment. Please comment on that. And Kayoma, as usual, they simply deliver. Yes, I, I would say that uh, we see all assets in the portfolio performing well. And uh, some of the challenges that we encountered in the second quarter of the year with the union blockade and all of that have been largely resolved. And, uh, you know, we have... Five mines in the portfolio. Uh, there are some that are doing a bit better than others. That's normal. So the Yaramoko mine is enjoying a very good uh, quarter, a, a very good few quarters. And we see that continuing into the end of the year and, and early next. We are certainly uh, uh, identifying higher grades in, in some zones where we are expanding and opening new working production areas. Uh, today, Yaramoko is probably the mine that's performing best uh, in terms of meeting or exceeding guidance in the portfolio. No, The other ones are tracking uh, within within the mid-range of guidance or or... Uh, but Yaramoku is at a pace where it could easily exceed uh, guidance. No, so we're excited about that. Now let's let's come to the financial numbers. Those caused some turbulences in the market. I think it was announced at August 9th. Let's have a look at the press release and the probably guilty number for that. That is your press release here. Adjusted net income 2.9 million. Net income 3.5, adjusted EBITDA 44.4 million. And if you scroll a bit downwards, there is an all in sustaining cost of 1,799. But the cash costs, on the other hand, were still at $968. Jorge, what happened there? What is the reason why the all in sustaining was so high? Can we expect them lower in the current quarter? 
You know, I believe that this is a difficult market and uh, there are uh, overreactions. We, we view our quarter as a quarter very much in line with our expectations. Yes, the, the headline number for all in sustaining costs came in high in the quarter, but we have not modified our expectations for the year. Uh, you know, we lost in the quarter in the second quarter, we lost uh, 15 days of production at the San Jose mine. We had a small uh, start of operations after the, the 15 day loss of operations. So it was not like we could resume operations immediately immediately after the stoppage. So, so that waited on production. Then we had the additional costs incurred to to resolve the 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 issue with the union and some uh, commitments in the range of two million dollars that we agreed to pay based on some performance metrics to the to the union. So it's not just the loss of production, but the added costs related to solving that issue. Also remember that in the second quarter. Uh, at the Yaramoko mine, we were repairing the arm tech tunnel, and uh, there were costs associated with that as well. So the loss of production at the San Jose mine and these one-time higher costs all weighted in 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 the all-in sustaining cost. Right? Uh, if you look at the cash cost, we were the the cost the cash cost to run the mines was very much under control, under a thousand dollars per ounce. So that spike in, in all in sustaining was, was basically driven by a stoppage that was resolved uh, and, and uh, other one-time uh, events. You know, I believe it was a, a very uh, an unfortunate overreaction in a difficult market. Uh, we were able to generate free cash flow in the quarter at the tune of around $9 million. You know, we managed to log in uh, a modest uh, net income, positive net income in the range of $3 million. Uh, we had robust EBITDA. Uh, you know, some uh, investors are not uh, fans of using EBITDA, but we do use it because this is a capital intensive business and you need a good healthy EBITDA to meet those capital demands as well, right? So we provide a measure of EBITDA, we provide a measure of free cash, a measure of net uh, operating cash flow, we provide all of those measures. And we run the business with an, a net income, a net cash flow from operations of around $40 million. And uh, we also uh, healthy EBITDA margin, of, uh, healthy EBITDA of 44 million. So, you know, our business generated enough cash flow to service all the sustaining capital needs of the business left us with around $9 million in free cash. And the spike in all in sustaining costs, as I explained, was mainly explained by uh, one-time events and the loss of production at the San Jose mine in the quarter, uh, which was resolved. So I don't see a drama there, but again, this is a market where everybody is just looking for an excuse to sell. And unfortunately, they found it there in the fine print, right? But the company, the, the the business has never been stronger. And uh, we look with a lot of anticipation to the second half of the year. Yeah. And do you have already a rough guess for the production numbers of the third quarter? Some numbers from Siguela. I assume that uh, San Jose is running at nameplate again. Yeah, San Jose throughout the quarter has been performing well. And, uh, you know, it's... We provide guidance, no? Uh, I, as as you can imagine, Jan, I cannot tell you, well, you know, what am I going to produce in the third quarter at this mine or that mine specifically, because of these closure limitations. But I can tell you that we are tracking within guidance, no? Uh, if we are not, we would be uh, adjusting guidance, and and our guidance, we provide guidance on production and guidance on cost. And I can tell you that in spite of this spike in all in sustaining cost in the third con in the second quarter, we're seeing our, our costs overall for the business tracking along with our expectations for the year. 
So uh, yeah, and, and what we guided. So we're we're feeling very calm, very good, and uh, we are expecting strong free cash flow generation as a, 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 that starts ramping up in the third quarter because there are two things happening. One, our capital demands are coming down. We are concluded with two years of construction of the Segela mine. So there is a compounded effect, less capital demands and higher free cash flows. So that is the, 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 the turning point we're in and the point I wanna make to your audience, uh, pay attention to our third quarter results because it's an important inflection point for Fortuna. Um, our capital budgets in 2022 were around $230 million, if I include mineral exploration. And in 2023, our capital budgets are around $180 million. All of that is weighted towards the first half of the year. In the second half of the year, capital demands drop significantly and cash flows increase significantly. And, and that is what the, the junction we are in right now. And that's work that we, we've been carrying and, and, and working quietly, diligently over the last two and a half years since we did the acquisition of, of Roxcode, right? You had the opportunity to visit the Seguela mine and see firsthand the work that we've been deploying over the last two, two and a half years, right? Yes, a fantastic mine. But not just that, that is coming on stream. You also had good exploration results. And I remember that you always were looking, that you were looking for better results in Mexico at San Jose. And what happened out of the sudden, you hit, let me read here, 9.9 .9 meters at 1,299 grams silver equivalent per ton. I call this a real bonanza hit. And then also at the Barana prospect at Seguela, 90.9 .9 grams over 1.8 meters, really good results that speak for the quality of the assets, especially for Mexico. What is your assessment of this result? Yes, the, the one that I am um, particularly, uh, you know, follow, following up closely is the discovery in Mexico. I want to make a point here for your audience. We have made in Mexico an exciting discovery. Uh, our first hall, uh, the discovery hall at the Yesi vein, intersected uh, close to 10 meters with 1.3 kilograms of silver equivalent per ton. That is uh, an amazing drill intercept. But that is a discovery. We have made an exciting discovery. Now our work is to turn that discovery, an exciting that exciting discovery, into an exciting resource. The work we're conducting right now is to see this exciting discovery, how meaningful it is to our production. How meaningful can it be to our production? And uh, and that's work that's going to take place over the next uh, weeks and, and couple of months. Uh, and my intent is to publish a news release once I can, I'm in a position to provide uh, uh, investors, shareholders with a sense of precisely that, how meaningful this discovery is. Because th these are two different things. One thing is an exciting discovery hall. And we're really excited about this one. And, and second, having that exciting discovery mature into an exciting resource that can have meaningful impact in our production. So the first step is the, the important one, an exciting discovery, and we got that one. Now we need some time to see how meaningful this is, right? And it is of particular importance because I know that your mine life at San Jose was rather short. So probably could extend your mind life uh, meaningfully. I keep my fingers crossed. You know, that's an expectation that we all have. And uh, it's and the expectation is not only that we can add tonnage 
and, and extend life mine, but with quality ounces, right? The San Jose mine has been an, an, a, 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 a very good asset in our portfolio. No? For many years, this is a mine that ranked among the top 12 primary silver producers in the world. And uh, it would be nice if we can, through exploration success, take it up there again with in, into that uh, select group of, of world uh, mines. You know, I, I'm not sure we 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 can get there, I, but I think we have a fighting chance. So what we're gonna do is uh, do the work systematically and, and see if we can get there. But the first step is making a discovery, and this is a most exciting discovery. Just uh, I, I, I'll I'll pose to you and your audience a question, uh, and you don't have to be a geologist to answer this one. What are the chances that in the first hole you pierce through the best portion of it? You and I were playing darts at the Seguela mine, uh, and uh, one one night there. And uh, if I blindfold you and, and, and you throw a dart, what are the chances that you hit the bull, right? Well, so I, I don't believe that we hit the bull with the 10 meters at uh, 1.3 kilos. I believe there is a good chance that there is more of that. We just need to do the work and see if we can confirm that, right? Mm. So I, I, I am very excited. The entire team is quite excited about uh, the discovery. But uh, we need time. We need time, and that time is probably measured in in, in weeks, uh, a couple of months. Uh, so we de- let our drill rigs run and 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 start giving us giving us a sense of size for this, right? Two final points for today, Jorge. First, you finished your Chesa acquisition, and then a question about the general situation in West Africa. We know there was the military coup in Niger. Does this in any matter affect your business in Burkina Faso or elsewhere? That is a question that I frequently got. Yes. So to to answer the first one, uh, we successfully closed the Chesa acquisition. And what Chesar provides to us is a most exciting advanced exploration gold project in, in Senegal. It's the Diambasut project. Diambasut sits at the heart of one of the most productive gold belts in West Africa. It's called the Mali Shear, Mali Senegalese Shear Zone. And that shear zone hosts on the Mali side of the border, uh, some of the more, I would say, tier one gold assets uh, in the portfolios of companies like Barrick and, and, and B2 Gold. So we have the Fecola mine, the Uncoto mine, so, so and, and the Lulo, Uncoto, and Fecola mines there in the trend. Uh, we are in the same geology, in the same structures, just across the border, right? But it's exactly the same geology. And uh, Chesser, over with little funding, because you know, because of this dreadful market, Chesser always uh, struggled to 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 get proper funding. But with that little funding, they got over two years. Chesser was successfully in taking the Ambassud from a concept to about 850,000 ounces of gold. And, and we believe we have a good chance to continue building on that and take this project well beyond a million ounces. A sub-million ounce deposit is not a, a project we would build. So there is still geologic risk attached to this opportunity. But based on our geologic assessment, we believe we have an excellent opportunity to continue growing this deposit uh, beyond a million ounces of gold, right? So we, you're going to see us start working as, uh, as soon as uh, October, hopefully October, November, we can have drill rigs on site turning. And that's a, an exploration priority in our, in our exploration portfolio. 
Uh, with respect to the security situation, political situation in West Africa, I think that, uh, you know, when we talk about West Africa, we tend to make a, a generalization, you know, a geographic generalization uh, of, of uh, under this concept of Western Africa. Uh, I believe there is a, a rift that has been created between the more sub-Sahara, Sahel uh, countries like Mali, uh, in Burkina Faso, Niger, uh, and the more coastal countries like uh, the Ivory Coast and Senegal. Uh, so yes, right now in Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, uh, we see you know, political instability, uh, a series of uh, military coups taking place, uh, a deteriorating security environment. Having said that, uh, the three countries, uh, particularly Mali and Burkina Faso, they tend to be quite supportive of their mining industries. If there is a discussion, it's about perhaps how much of, of your uh, revenue they want in terms of royalties or taxes, but there is no dispute that they want mines and and it's just that balance between how much they, they're going to take before they start scaring investment away. But I see uh, Cote d'Ivoire, you know, the Ivory Coast and Senegal as, as completely different environments uh, today. Uh, the political process is relatively more stable. And these are countries that are, you know, welcoming mining jurisdictions to foreign investors, right? So, you know, we ran a mine in Burkina Faso. And I have to say that in spite of all the security challenges, humanitarian crisis that's taking place in the country, uh, we get a lot of support from the government in terms of security, sharing intelligence. So I, I, I think we cannot say anything uh, uh, negative in respect to the support we get from the government to guarantee continued operations. Thanks for the update, Jorge. And we are looking forward to the Q3 numbers, of course. And as the old saying is, if blood is running this, uh, around the streets or down the streets, then grab the opportunity. The market is still tough. We see it gold and silver, but on the other hand, we have the, we have the geopolitical issues, the debt situation getting out of control, especially in the USA. So I think we have to sit tight and the reward will follow. And then I'm pretty sure those companies like Fortuna with a healthy cash flow, even under those circumstances, will really start to shine. Thanks for today. A final statement. Yes, no, I, I concur. No, uh, uh, Investors in, in the precious metals mining equities in particular have been put to the test. Uh, you really have to need to have a strong contrarian investment uh, thesis to feel comfortable in this environment. But uh, our job here is to provide the investors with as much optionality as we can. And uh, we do that by operating assets like Seguela with low costs and, and, and assets that can perform throughout the, the precious metals price cycle. And uh, that's what we're focusing, no? Assets with longevity, assets that can operate with low cost. And, uh, and you know, that, that's, that's what we're working for every day. Thanks for the update. Today, Jorge, have a good stay in Paris. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Adios. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye. -bye. Bye.